Today we're getting into the latest Tesla news, including Tesla's partner for the $25,000 EV, FSD coming to all for free, Cybertruck updates and more, so let's get into it, and a special thanks to Novium for sponsoring a portion of this video. First up today, the promise of a fully autonomous car has been the dream of Tesla since the very beginning. They've been working on their full self-driving software for years now, offering customers access to the beta program in exchange for a hefty fee. The software is very impressive in some ways and still lacking in others, but Tesla is working diligently to improve it all the time. With the release of FSD version 12, Tesla is clearly wanting to show off to customers just how much it has improved. This new update leverages Tesla's behind the scenes improvements to their machine learning systems and increased driver data to produce what should be a major step forward for the software. While the future of FSD is definitely very exciting, Tesla has had a hard time getting new customers to buy in. FSD currently costs $12,000 or is available as a subscription for $200 per month. A lot of customers, myself included, didn't really think it was worth it for that price, but Tesla seems very confident in this most recent update. In a company-wide message, Elon Musk announced that employees must start giving FSD demos to all new customers when they take delivery of a Tesla vehicle. That's surely going to slow down deliveries if every customer has to stop and fiddle around with FSD, but they clearly think this insight into the software will drive sales long term. Then shortly after that announcement, Elon posted on X saying, all US cars that are capable of FSD will be enabled for a one month trial this week. Tesla is really betting big here, hoping that once all customers get a taste of what having FSD is like, especially the latest version, they are going to see a much wider buy-in from the public. Tesla has offered free trials of FSD before, mainly as end of quarter sales incentives or referral bonuses, but they've never offered anything this big before across the board. Last year, Elon teased that a free month of FSD may be coming to North America once the driving experience is quote, super smooth. I guess that means that FSD version 12 is smooth enough for Elon to make good on that promise. We are seeing a lot of reports that this new version is much improved in a lot of scenarios, but of course, it's still not perfect. Tesla recently started rolling out their updated auto park feature, and that has shown some pretty big improvements over its predecessor as well. I've been playing around with FSD version 12 a little bit, and so far it is impressive, but it's still slow in some areas and still needs improvement in others. With that said, I'm excited to see what a full free trial of this does for all customers and all awareness for FSD and how it may impact promotion and sales in the future. Next up today, Tesla is constantly working both internally and with their partners to improve the efficiency and cost of their vehicle's batteries. One of Tesla's biggest collaborators, the Chinese company CATL, is working very closely with the automaker to expand production in the US while working on the next generation of battery technology. Currently, Tesla sells five vehicles, but the biggest thing on the horizon for them is their next generation vehicle platform. They have given quite a lot of details about this vehicle and all the revolutionary ways they plan to make it differently so that it can be produced in mass at an affordable price. On Tesla's side, we've assumed they would be expanding their 4680 cell production to furnish this car, but the reality is they will need more battery cells than ever before once this is scaled. That's why Tesla has been clear that they will keep buying as much battery supply as they can from suppliers while also working to make their own cells. Currently, their entirely in-house made 4680 cells without partnerships are what power the Cybertruck. Long term, this very well could expand as we've seen production grow there a lot, but a partner seems to be Tesla's best angle for their next generation vehicle platform. First, we expect this car to come in the form of a more affordable EV, hopefully around $25,000 as originally talked about. Then in time, hopefully as well, they'll be able to build a dedicated robo-taxi on this same platform along with other vehicles. That's where the largest EV battery manufacturer in the world comes in. In an interview with Bloomberg, CATL's chairman, Robin Zhang, gave us some insight into the company and their future plans with Tesla. One of CATL's biggest projects right now is developing the fast charging battery cells that will be deployed in Tesla's upcoming $25,000 EV. Obviously, in order to hit that price point, there will have to be some cost reductions in the manufacturing process, and the battery seems to be a likely candidate for those cuts. Zhang told Bloomberg, there's always room for cost reduction depending on what the $25,000 car's aim is. If it's for robo-taxis, we don't have to worry about the cost reduction for each cell as our batteries have a longer life cycle, and so their average cost is actually lower. In addition to reducing costs, Tesla and CATL are also working to dramatically increase the charging speed of these new batteries. Fast charging batteries with a cheaper form factor could do a lot to make this new model a really compelling option. In addition to designing those new cells, CATL is also working with Tesla to bring further battery production to the US. Tesla has licensed their technology and is working with the company to install CATL machinery at Giga Nevada. 
The company is working to expand battery production out of that factory and is in the process of opening a new facility there to use this equipment. As a Chinese company, CATL faces a lot of legal and trade barriers to selling their tech directly in the United States. With this new method, CATL is licensing their production equipment and processes to American automakers so that they can produce the batteries domestically. Not only will this circumvent any trade barriers from importing batteries, but it will also help to make any new EVs qualify for the federal EV tax credit. This is a very interesting approach because it's very much Tesla working with CATL, who is incredible at what they do, but they will still have control over the process. It will be coming out of their own current battery factory in Nevada. This allows it to qualify for the tax credit as mentioned, which could allow this car to come down to an even crazier price for those that qualify. This also helps Tesla cut more costs. They are getting the benefits of CATL equipment while simply adding them into their current battery production pipeline. This further ensures that they aren't simply another manufacturer on the list that CATL is shipping to. They can actively balance everything they need. CATL has also been partnering with a lot of Western automakers like Ford, Mercedes, BMW, and then quote, 10 to 20 others to license them their battery production methods. With these partnerships, we may see a huge rise in domestic production of EV batteries, and maybe even see more vehicles become eligible for the EV tax credit. I'm very excited to see what comes of this because at the end of the day, a battery solution is the main problem underlying the production, scaling, and profitability of an affordable EV. Tesla's $25,000 EV will be extremely reliant on this tech, so it's exciting to see CATL directly working on it in a way that will enable it to qualify for a tax credit. With that said, while Tesla will have some control of this production at Giga Nevada, it sounds like many other companies trying to make competing EVs will be able to get the same battery tech. So ultimately, Tesla's main advantage still could come with manufacturing improvements that they are making exclusively for this car. Elon Musk has called this revolutionary multiple times, and it may prove to be the most important piece for this car, along with that battery tech CATL is working on. After all, if a ton of affordable batteries can be supplied to a company that can't make the cars affordably, it's not going to matter. These things all have to work in tandem. CATL is on the cutting edge of battery technology, and their partnership with Tesla is only growing stronger. I can't wait to see the new specs of the upcoming affordable Tesla and what this partnership with CATL may mean for the future of their batteries and that car. It could allow them to ship a fairly low range version of this car at an affordable price that charges very quickly so people don't mind. Before we go any further, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Novium. Novium makes high-end pens that defy gravity using no electricity. They're very cool in themselves, but they also make great gifts for science and tech enthusiasts. Novium's uniquely designed hover pens float in their stands, are refillable, and make the perfect desk decoration. I love the way it stays perfectly balanced while it spins. On top of looking extremely cool though, they're the optimal riding pens. The hover pen Interstellar Edition won Times Award for one of the best innovations of 2022. This one sits at a 23.5 degree angle, mimicking the angle of the Earth's axis. It comes in space black, starlight silver, Mars magma, and Neptune blue. Premium editions are 18 karat gold plated and have a real meteorite shard embedded inside of them. This shard comes from a meteorite that's 20 million years older than the Earth itself. It'll probably be the oldest object you ever get to touch, which is very cool. Then the future edition looks like a rocket and can come in a two-in-one fountain and rollerball combo with an interchangeable tip. To check out these amazing pens for yourself or a friend, click the link in the description below or scan the QR code on screen. Then use my code RyanShaw to get a 10% discount and free worldwide shipping to most countries on all hover pens. Next up today, the Cybertruck is one of the boldest vehicles that Tesla has ever released, combining unique aesthetics with innovative technology and design. Tesla has been working to increase production of this truck since it launched late last year, and we've all speculated as to how much they'd be able to ramp it up in how much time. We don't have any firm numbers yet, but the newest leaked photos and information show us just how much production is growing behind the scenes. YouTuber Jeff Roberts has posted a drone flyover of Giga Texas, where we can see a huge lineup of Cybertrucks, fresh off the production line, waiting to be charged. In this photo alone, we can see well over 70 Cybertrucks out at once. Obviously, it's really promising to see this many Cybertrucks on the lot, but that still doesn't give a complete picture of how well Cybertruck production is ramping up. YouTuber Brad Sloan has posted a different drone flyover of Giga Texas, and the numbers we are seeing here are pretty fantastic. Throughout this flyover, he spotted over 370 Cybertrucks off the production line and presumably ready for delivery. Elon Musk even commented below that saying, production is ramping, but what does that exactly mean? We're still not entirely sure how many Cybertrucks Tesla can produce in a day, but clearly they are ramping at a significant pace. 
Speculation as of just one month ago suggested that daily production sat around 80 units per day. This could be an accumulation of several days worth of production, but if we were to take that 370 number at face value as a single day's worth of trucks, that would be a truly remarkable amount of growth. Even if daily production was only half of that number, then the rate the Tesla is growing this truck's output is still exceptional and way better than most electric trucks we've seen so far. But how many Cybertrucks has Tesla managed to deliver so far? We are starting to see VINs out in the wild in the 5,000s, so we know that they must have broken that 5,000 threshold. This tweet was made on March 21st, and trucks in the low 4,000s were being delivered as recently as March 15th. If we take that at face value, that would imply that Tesla delivered over 900 Cybertrucks in less than a week's time. That rate would suggest that Tesla is at least producing over 200 trucks per day. While these VINs give us some insight into how production is going generally, we don't have quite enough information to know exactly how many trucks are being made per day. We could be way over predicting here. Clearly this increased production is resulting in more frequent deliveries and it's driving down the price of this vehicle on the secondhand market. An all wheel drive Cybertruck was spotted up for auction online last week and clearly the seller had high expectations for its going price. It ended up being unsold as the top bid of $158,000 didn't clear the reserve price. Increased production means that more reservation holders are going to be getting their trucks sooner. So buying an insanely marked up truck doesn't make as much sense to anyone who might have considered paying these prices. Tesla has also been introducing a lot of promotions lately, allowing reservation holders to jump the line. This means that the customers who are the most desperate to get their hands on this truck have ways of doing that without immediately turning to the secondhand market. Tesla knew that scalpers would be a problem with this truck, which is why they included the $50,000 minimum fee clause for resellers. They knew that production would ramp up quickly, and they didn't want a resale market clogged with highly marked up vehicles that would depreciate back to normal Cybertruck pricing quickly. The Cybertruck is already a pretty unique looking vehicle to say the least, but users are finding new ways to express themselves even further with it. The official Tesla page has recently posted some images from YouTuber Heavy D Sparks, which shows a pretty tricked out off-roading Cybertruck. It has custom tires built for better handling in the sand, as well as some aftermarket lights for increased visibility in the wilderness. While Tesla refers to this as the Mad Max edition, the SpaceX logo printed on the side means you can't help but imagine this thing driving around on Mars someday. While many are customizing their trucks to this extreme, Tesla is also offering some new wrap colors that will help the less adventurous still make this truck into their own. For $6,500, you can now wrap the Cybertruck in one of six colors. They include some pretty cool options, including iridescent purple, forest green, satin crimson red, tactical green, satin dark gray, and copper tinted clear. That brings the total number of colored wraps available from Tesla up to 11, with an additional clear wrap also available. A lot of these newer colors are currently marked as unavailable on their website, but once they're in stock, you're going to be able to have them applied in West Covina, Oceanside, Costa Mesa, or Santa Clara, California, as well as in Austin, Texas. The Cybertruck is one of the most exciting new vehicles on the market, and it's remarkable how much it has inspired people to customize it far more than many other cars. As production increases, I can't wait to see what people do with it next, and how many more people get this truck. Next up today, Tesla's supercharger network is widely known to be the most reliable EV charging network in the world. Soon, however, you are likely going to be able to pull into charging stalls from a number of different brands and get a charging experience of nearly identical quality. You may be asking, how are they going to be able to do that? The answer is simple, by using and rebranding Tesla superchargers. For the first time, V4 superchargers are being deployed, but conspicuously missing the Tesla branding. Last year, Tesla made a huge deal when they sold $100 million worth of supercharger hardware to oil giant BP to be deployed across the US. Tesla's head of charging said that third-party supercharger sales would be a new big business that Tesla is entering, and since then, they have made even more deals for their equipment. They made a similar deal to supply the superchargers for the EV point charging network being built in the UK. Since that deal was made, the first station has appeared in a convenience store parking lot with 10 available stalls. We're not quite sure how many Tesla stalls that company will be installing, but it's very exciting to see the first of these chargers come online. We'll have to see how long it takes for these chargers to expand across the UK and Europe, and how long it will be before non-Tesla superchargers appear in the US. This is a very interesting way to see EV charging infrastructure expand across the world. Customers will have greater access to supercharger stations, no matter what EV they drive, all while still ultimately having access to Tesla's level of quality and reliability at the charging stalls themselves. Tesla really does offer the best charging experience we can see out there right now when it comes to reliability, speed, and general uptime. So now that they're opening their network to other EVs, we'll have that, and we'll have other networks using Tesla's quality products.
Last up today, some updates from other automakers. While Tesla frequently appears in the news for its mandatory recalls, most of those are software problems that are easily fixed by over-the-air software updates. While most Tesla recalls have been for easily fixed problems that don't even require a service visit, not all automakers have been able to avoid the dreaded physical recall. The Hyundai Motor Group, which owns both Kia and Genesis, have just had to issue a pretty sweeping recall that will likely impact over 147,000 EVs. While the issue is ultimately software related, it impacts the integrated charging control unit in such a way that it could damage the unit, leading to charging problems and possibly losing power while driving. The recall currently affects the following vehicles, the Hyundai Ioniq 5 and 6, the Genesis GV60, GV70, and GV80, and the Kia EV6. This recall comes after the South Korean government announced a similar recall that will impact approximately 170,000 EVs in that country. Customers will have to bring their cars in to a certified dealer where the ICCU will be inspected for damage and replaced if necessary. While in service, they will be installing new software that, quote, decreases thermal loading and lowers peak voltage during operation to mitigate ICCU damage. This is a pretty serious recall that is seemingly going to impact a lot of vehicles around the globe. Hopefully they are able to fix this problem quickly and efficiently, and they are able to prevent it from appearing in any of their new upcoming models. As more automakers move into the electric vehicle market, Nissan is betting big on EVs while still maintaining a mixed powertrain strategy. Nissan has announced a plan to launch 30 new models worldwide within the next three years, with 16 of those being electric. While Nissan is still maintaining a heavy gas-powered presence, they have high hopes for their electric sales. They are planning for 40% of their global sales to be electric by 2026, and for that to rise to 60% by 2030. In order to increase the demand for their EVs, Nissan is making plans to greatly reduce customer pricing. By sharing development costs with other automakers, Nissan is planning to cut the costs of next-gen EVs by 30% compared to the Nissan Aria, which currently starts at around $40,000 for the base trim. They are planning to have pricing parity between EV and ICE models by 2030. 16 models marks a really big investment into electrification, but Nissan is still holding on to their ICE models for now. We also don't know what percentage of those new models will be purely electric or alternatives like hybrids. It's good to see a legacy automaker like Nissan invest further into electric vehicles, but hopefully this mixed strategy isn't a case of them trying to have their cake and eat it too. That's all the latest Tesla news for today, so in the meantime, if you want to see the latest for the Model Y Ludicrous, you can check out that video linked up here or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.